Hey everyone, and welcome to part 3 of Let's Clone a Pokemon game. So, since last time I had to go through and pre-code a few things, just because I wasn't quite sure about the lerp feature at hand. Um, so, vector3.lerp is pretty much a function that's used to move an object from one point to the other. The problem I was having was time.delta time was making it move way too fast, so I had to change, up, change it up just a little bit to get it to work properly, so that our character will move more slowly to one point to the other. And also I had a couple of other movement feature issues with m being able to move while holding down the key but not having it call at the time. So I will go over that in a second. I just want to show you guys what I have set up so far. So what I did was I took a grass plane and I duplicated it and lifted it up off the ground just a little bit. And then I put my character sprite on there. So, I pretty much just grabbed this off the internet, um, it's just a sprite sheet for Ash, and what these, what this does is allow you to play different animations off of the sprite sheet. So it goes through the rows and columns and it plays each one individually, depending on which one you, ones you have set to play. So if we're moving in one direction, we want to just, you know, play one row of the sprite sheet, and we don't want to play the entire thing. For now, we're just setting up the basics, so it's going to be playing in all all these animations, but in the future we'll just set to work properly. So, let's see here. So pretty much the code is something I made from a previous tutorial. I'll link that down in the description below if you guys need that. I don't know if who's using 4.3, but I think there's a sprite manager in there, so you might not even have to use this code. So you can just set it up that way and not have to worry about all this. But if you're using an older version like 4.2 or earlier then um, you might need to use this code. So pretty much this has the X and Y setup for which tiles or how many tiles you have on each row and column and frames per second how fast it plays and this is just the code to go through and actually play those animations. Also I made a player stat script. This is where we're going to be storing all our variables for our player itself and different stuff like the movement code and collision and all that. So pretty much this is our main code for our player itself. So that's all the stuff I have set up and we can go through the code and I'll show you guys what I set up. So pretty much I created a vector 3 for our start point and end point and this will pretty much be the player start position and this will be the player start position and then we're going to be adding a certain variable to that depending on uh, what direction we want to move. So for this, um, if we're pressing W, we want to be moving upwards, so we want to take, change the transform.position.z plus 20. So it'll grab our player's current position, and then it'll grab it again and add 20 to it. So we're going to be moving from the previous position to our new position, and then we're going to be lerping it so it slowly moves from one position to the next. So we have speed, increment, and is moving, and I'll go over those in a second. Um, I set up in the start function just the basic transform for our player position for both because for some reason it was setting our point at 0, 0, 0 in the world, which is something we don't want. So this is just a basic way to get that fixed. So wherever your player is at, it'll just equal to that position so it won't move. And so now we have increment is less or equal to 1 and is moving equals equals true. So, while our player is moving, we want to increase the increment, and this will allow our player to move, because it'll be changing the actual lerp position for increment, so our player will be moving from one point to the next. So if we did this times time.delta time, instead of just the update time, it'll be moving a lot faster, I found out. So, this is a simple way to fix that issue. And then else, if we're not moving, we want is moving to equal false. And then is moving, so while our player is moving, we want to use that lerp function. So this is transform that position, vector 3 lerp, and this is our start point and end point. So our start position and then our start position plus 20. And we're going to be moving it from here to there by the increment. And then the piece of code that I was trying to figure out before was we we're using input.getKey. So this is not input.getKey down, which would be every time you lift off the key or every time you press it down, you have to lift up and press it again to move. 
you can just be holding the key down. So it's constantly getting called, but it's only being called when is moving equals false. So if we've reached that next point, we're able to call that again, but it's just a lot easier to do it this way or a lot more like Pokemon itself, because when you're walking around in Pokemon, you're just holding down the button, you're not constantly tapping to move, or you can tap to move, but it's easier just to hold down the button. So after we press that, we want to increase the increment to zero, so we're resetting that, so it'll start playing and moving our player like that. And then is moving to true. And then here is where we want to set our start point to our transform.position, so our player's current position. And endpoint, we're going to be making a new vector 3. And we can plug in our player's position.x.y and .z. And so for the z, we're going to increase that by 20. And so if you want to move it in a different direction, let's say, we'll just copy this real quick. And we can actually change this to S, and we can make this negative 20 instead. And then you can do these with each one. And then for um, the, let's see here, the A and D keys, you're going to want to change the X's position, so either plus 20 or minus 20. And so hopefully I saved that real quick. And we can go test this out. I'm actually going to run this in not in window mode, so I can actually show you guys what's happening. So here we have our start point and end point set at zero, our speed set to four, and whatnot. So when we press play, you can see that our start point and our end point are currently the same. That's just because that's where we started off in this position, because that's where our character was originally. So what we're going to do is we're just going to press W and you're going to see our character move. And now the Z has changed. Now if we press W again, you see both these change again. So it's grabbing our new position and our new position plus 20. And I believe, hopefully that's a, I believe that's the center point, yes. So each one of these tiles is 20 by 20, and that makes it a lot easier to calculate where we're moving to the center point. And so now we can move up and down. Right now I'm pressing the S key to move down. And actually I'll just hold it down. You can see that it it glides along. And then as soon as I let go, it's going to line up with the center. Now, it might not look like my character's in the center, but it's because of the sprite sheet, our character is placed more at the bottom. But the sprite sheet is still centered there. So if you guys want to go ahead and try implementing the A and D keys, um, it should be very simple to do, and it will give you guys a good learning experience on how to set that up. But yeah, until next time, we'll start going over a few more of the other features. We might try getting the actual combat system working to where we're teleported to a new area to battle. and we'll, Or we might cover something else. Um, we might cover teleporting or something. So don't quote me on that yet, but just stay tuned for the next tutorial, guys.